This is uh, the March 3, 2015 Board of Selectmen meeting, and we want to announce, as we always do, that the meeting is being recorded, and we're going to start by taking a moment of appreciation for our servicemen and women serving around the world. Thank you. Um, the Medfield Board of Selectmen needs to meet in an executive session at the close of business with the Board of Appeals on zoning to discuss the Clark Tavern Court Appeal. Uh, and we're starting tonight with uh, Mike Sullivan, Town Administrator, to review the town finances. I put together this afternoon, uh, with the help of a bunch of people around here, um, an estimate of where we are uh, in terms of uh, the fiscal 16 budget. Mm -hmm. And before I get started on, on that, uh, Chris will be updating you on the uh, snow deficit for this year. Okay. But um, we have 40 articles. We went over that at the last meeting. So what I've tried to do <coughs> is to um, go through the list of articles. And if you turn to the next page, okay. I go through it and I've made a guesstimate as to what amount of money yeah. we might be looking for mm -hmm. and where the source of that money is. Perfect. Uh, the first column is the total amount. Yep. The next column is from the tax levy, from water and sewer enterprise, from trust and stabilization, prior year appropriation, free cash, and the uh, revolving accounts. Gee, this uh, is a great schedule, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's it's very helpful in, in trying to see, as, as you'll see in a couple of minutes, uh, understanding where we are at this point in the game. This, by the way, does not include the special town meeting because uh, neither of those articles impacts the levy limit right. uh, because one will be a debt exclusion override and the other will be sewer enterprise funds. So I yep. just concentrated on the annual town meeting articles. Yeah. Um, if you want to go through those and if you have any questions about uh, where we are, you'll notice it does not include a total for the operating budget. That will be on the front sheet. We'll get right. to that in a second. So um, the total warrant excluding the operating budget uh, looks like it's about 3618000 um, About one million of that a little over a million is coming from would come from the tax levy, yeah. 150,000 from the water enterprise surplus, a um, million eight sixty six from trust and stabilization funds, um, and um, thirty three thousand from prior year appropriations. That's for the OPEB, uh, the Norfolk County assessment. And then uh, I recommended using $266,000 from free cash mm -hmm. to make up the 400000 for the OPEB. Yep. Um, the revolving accounts, they're technically not appropriated. They're authorized, but there's no appropriation for them, and they just kind of wash out. But yeah. uh, you do have to put them on the recap sheet, and it's good to know the total amount that we are voting authorizing to expend in the revolving accounts. Uh, there's two changes in the revolving account this year. One is that uh, uh, Roberta, uh, both involving the uh, uh, Council on Aging, yeah. Roberta <clears throat> asked that the name of the rental revolving account be changed, um, and uh, <clears throat> that's reflected in the wording of the article. And she also asked that the respite care revolving account be increased to 75000 Yep. Um, okay, if you go to the other side of that sheet, the second sheet, oh. you'll see um, under the operating budget, mm -hmm. these are non-tax levy sources of revenue. Okay. So if you take the total operating budget, these will be deducted from it in determining what comes out of the tax levy. Got it. Okay. So you got your cemetery perpetual care credit, you got your water and sewer enterprise funds. Yep. You've got um, the uh, pension reserve. We've been taking 100000 out of that to uh, appropriate towards the Norfolk County Retirement Assessment. Last year, you may recall, we put a 
extra 100000 in the stabilization fund because this year is a 27 pay period yeah. year. It happens about once every five or six years. So it, the estimate was it was going to cost somewhere around 200000 So we said if we split it over two years, oh, okay. uh, that will ease the impact of it a little bit rather than doing it all in one year. So we put 100000 away last year in stabilization, and we're recommending taking that out this year. Mike, is uh, local receipt, is, uh, is that reflected also in the meal tax? Is that what that is under local receipts? Local receipts is the meals tax, yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, uh, we used, in setting this year's tax rate, we used about 53000 So when you are, um, I estimated about 100000 for the meals tax. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gives you about 47000 actual new revenues because there's 53000 already built in there from last year's mm -hmm. or fiscal 15 tax rate. Um, but, yeah, that's where it would be. Um, the... Um, Okay, and we have a, we've still got a couple of things. We have some bond premiums uh, for different bond issues. We've mm -hmm. got the uh, that 18 million that school building assistance gave us that we're spending down, applying towards the school debt, and those are all coming out of the operating budget. So that comes to a million eight eighty that will be applied to general fund operating budgets, yeah. and three million six hundred eight thousand. To enterprise fund. Yeah. Uh, now, part of that enterprise fund money is an offset to the general <coughs> fund budgets. For example, part of the uh, the water superintendent uh, uh, salary, mm -hmm. the sewer superintendent, the town accountant, the treasurer, yeah. uh, the pensions for the water department employees and health insurance. That's all coming out of uh, the enterprise fund. Um, so they do. They take like a percent. They try to figure what percent is what. Yeah, yeah Joy it's has kinda. very complicated <laughs> spreadsheets that she puts together every year and calculates. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, we we have four sewer and four water employees. Their health insurance. She'll yeah. calculate what the premiums we paid yeah, for them that, yeah. and take that out. She figures uh, what the pension costs are uh, as a percent. I think that's you say a percentage of payroll. Mm -hmm. so. Um. Okay, so the um, subtotal of available funds for the general fund, if you take the other sheet, the sheet we just took a look at, and that was uh, one million eight sixty six, the thirty three thousand and the two sixty six. Mm -hmm. Those are the amounts that that uh, uh, you don't count the enterprise fund and you don't count the um, revolving accounts. So those three columns add up to your um, two million one sixty six, mm -hmm. and the one eighty is the figure from above that comes out of the operating budget. So that comes to four million oh forty seven. Um, the revolving funds are two forty eight five. The water and sewer enterprise revenues from above three million six oh eight. Local receipts is four million mm -hmm. nine thousand. State aid is seven million three hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and that assumes a twenty-five dollar increase per student in state aid. Now this afternoon, we were notified. John Nunnery and the superintendent sent emails saying that the governor had proposed a hundred five million dollar increase in aid to education. Mm -hmm. um, this current year, we got twenty-five dollars additional per student. Mm -hmm. Next year, that will be twenty dollars. So it's five dollars less per student is mm -hmm. is what under what he's proposed. However, he did also propose an increase in uh, lo uh, additional assistance. Yeah. That account that's made up of lottery funds and other various accounts. Yeah, Three percent or something of that sort. Yeah. So, so that may make up for the loss of the five dollars per student in the education mm -hmm. aid. So it's. It's, these are all estimates at this point anyway. You, know, you just try to make your best guess. And, and, and that's all uh, contingent upon uh, the House looking at it, the Senate looking at it, and coming up with a final. This is just his yeah. recommendation. Right? right. And, you know, we may not, they may not have done that by the time we get over to town meeting, mm -hmm. so you're still guessing. No, and, and for the past several years, the, the 
the house has always increased the governor's budget in terms of what the, the town's got. Right. The Senate has sometimes increased it beyond what the house has done. So yes, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that the governor's proposal well, was a floor. I suppose a lot of it depends on what the snow tab comes in, and then they got the MBTA issue, and so you just don't know. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so that takes us to the front sheet. All of these figures you'll see that are in lay the into these uh, the front sheet, and this is the tax rate estimate. The first column is the actual figures for fiscal 15. Yeah. And from that, I took the fiscal estimate for fiscal 16, and you'll see the top part is the tax revenue. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the 35,595 is the maximum allowable levy limit, yeah. not including debt exclusion okay. revenues. Yeah. So you take that, you add the debt exclusion revenues, and then you take 2.5% levy increase in that, this year turns out to be eight hundred and ninety thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then uh, Stan gave me an estimate for new growth for next year. Mm -hmm. Now that he's leaving us, he's getting a little bit liberal. He usually gives me two fifty, went up to three hundred. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but he, but he that, doesn't that's care. a drop. We're down uh, from uh, FY fifteen. Well, we pl we do it conservatively. You just don't know how many buildings because some of the buildings aren't built yet. It goes through June thirtieth, and so you you it's better to be a little bit under in your estimate than over because at least you have it left over you don't you don't have to make it up somehow cut somewhere else so that comes to forty million ninety three thousand dollars in available property tax revenues um, as opposed to thirty eight three twenty this year now that doesn't include the debt service on the public safety building so mm -hmm. that would be added to that if the override is is approved mm -hmm. Uh, the next categories are state aid, and as you can see, I put 25 per head for Chapter 70 education aid. And the um, remember the hospital purchase cost, we don't appropriate that money. Yep. That is going to be added to the assessments under our expenditure side. That's 310000 Yep. We did have 155000 in there because there were two six monthly payments. So uh, the increase over last year is 155 not 310. Mm -hmm. um, we've lost 327,000 mm -hmm. because the 2000 high school renovation is paid off so there's no more reimbursement. Um, on the other side the debt service on that bill that has fallen off. Unfortunately the debt service payments were less than the reimbursement because we paid the whole amount in the early years of the of the bond issue so um, but that, uh, that is a loss there that we'll feel. Local receipts, I've added 47000 for the meals tax because we've already assumed 53000 would be used uh, in setting the 50 tax rate, and the total we're anticipating is 100000 So we still get 100000 It's just that the increase is only 43000 mm -hmm. rather than the $100,000. So um, revolving funds, as I mentioned, that's a, sort of a wash. Yep. You have 259 under revenues and you uh, 249 in revenues, you have 249 under expenditures, and they wash out because you don't really appropriate those funds. Other free cash, um, I recommended using 267 from free cash mm -hmm. to make up the 400,000 for the OPEB trust. That was on one of those other sheets mm -hmm. we just reviewed. Other available funds, four million oh forty seven. That figure also is on the back sheet. Mm -hmm. You can see that. Um, the subtotal of other available funds. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. And then the enterprise fund revenue is the three million six oh eight. Mm -hmm. That again is on those back sheet on the summary. Okay, so that brings us to a total of $59,573,000 as an estimate for revenues <clears throat> to be received. So now we go down expenditures. Mm -hmm. uh, the court judgment that you authorized at your last meeting is $30,000. The 174 last year, 18000 was to pay for part of the bond costs that weren't covered by premiums on the water tower and Redgate farmland. 
and the remainder um, is uh, was what uh, was a 155 for the uh, hospital payment. That's where yeah. the state told us to uh, mm -hmm. cover it last year. Mm -hmm. So that's why that drops down from 174 to 30,000. Snow deficit, I upped that. Last year we had 165,000. This year I've upped it to 250. We're already about 208. Um, however, we do anticipate that the governor has applied for reimbursement from the federal government for all four storms, and I believe he put some money in in the state budget to help cities and towns. Mm -hmm. We'll see what comes of it. But uh, if they do get enough money, the first storm, Donna Semino and the highway department has calculated that we're we have 243,000 eligible expenses from the blizzard, the first storm in January. Wow. Um, and it's 75% of whatever they determine is eligible. Mm -hmm. They probably will knock some of that out. But, sure. And then she has three more storms to go through if the federal government, in fact, approves all four storms. Yeah. Um, so if that's the case, that 250 may come down somewhat. On the other hand, it's still snowing, and these storms are not covered, so who knows. Um, overlay abatements, those that are cover unpaid taxes, uh, veterans abatements, widows abatements, uh, that sort of thing. Um, state cherry sheet offsets, that's very small, and it only covers school cafeteria subsidy uh, and uh, library subsidy. For it comes through on the cherry sheet, but you have to reserve it, and that's why it's called an offset. Um, state cherry sheet assessments went from 493 to 823. I've projected a 20% increase in the base assessments plus the 310,000 for the hospital purchase, because that's where the state has told us they now want to carry those funds. So. Um, it's unusual. Normally, that would be carried under principal interest and appropriated as town debt, but uh, it's not the case this year. <clears throat> Appropriation of revolving funds, we mentioned the 249 is a wash. Capital budget and other articles, the 3370000 mm -hmm. um, That's uh, the total of um, some of these sheets back here. Mm -hmm. um, the employee benefits, we did get some very good news yet. Late yesterday afternoon, our uh, insurance carrier called us, and Maya, the rate range that they established was a minimum of 3% increase and a maximum of 10.9% increase. We advised that our rate increase for next year will be 3%. So That's we unbelievable. Have the bottom of the range. Well, this I, year was much. What was it this year? 8.8%, yeah. yeah. I can't so, believe you can. And I was budgeting for 9% because yeah. our experience didn't seem to be that great. So, wow. So that's a big that's help really there. Good. Yeah. Um, and as I said, that came in late yesterday afternoon, so these figures are constantly in flux. Um, the school budget, that's the, as recommended by the school committee, that's up 5.4%, I believe, uh, 30654000 The vocational school budget, they tell us that's preliminary. It's uh, 166,167, depending on how you're around. Um, we have eight students at the vocational school, so if you divide that by eight, that'll give you roughly a cost per student that we're paying. Town budgets, uh, 10,681. Um, and um, if each general, 1% general salary increase that's at, that is uh, approved or recommended would add just about 52,000 to those totals. So yep. uh, nothing is in there for general salary increase. It is in there for the police negotiated <coughs> contracts. Uh, fire has not been settled yet, so there is nothing in there for fire. <laughs> um, and the water and sewer enterprise is uh, based on the budget submissions. So. Can I just go back real quick to the vocation. Yeah. That's based on the number of students we send, so that, right. and not on the on the total budget and assessment. So if we have eight students one year and it drops down to three students, and that assessment would go down. 
it goes down, but Medfield pays more than some of the other communities because they take wealth factors into account and per capita incomes. And so it's not just the number of students, it's some other factors. It's a whole formula, yeah. It's done using the education reform funding formula. Uh, even though the, the contract when the school was set up used yeah. a different formula, the courts rule that education reform shall now be the guiding principle. So if it's if it's eight students, we're paying twenty twenty one thousand a student. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the debt, um, as you can see, the non excluded debt is dropping way down because virtually everything we vote these days is excluded debt or enterprise fund debt. So, but our total debt is uh, up slightly this year from five million six hundred seventeen to five million seven forty six. Not a big amount. The big and the big reason for the increase is the hospital water tower exactly. that comes out. Yeah. Other than that, it would have gone down yeah. two or three hundred thousand yeah. um, dollars. Public safety, if that is approved, that will be added to that. Uh, so that brings a total uh, of uh, estimated appropriations to fifty nine five twenty six. When you add the one million three fifty four fixed expenditures, you come out with sixty million. Mm -hmm. 867. In order to balance the budget, we would need to use 12 million, excuse me, 1,294,000. Normally, we try to stick with 500,000. That means you're somewhere that's 794. Let's say you added a 2% general salary increase, that would be about 900,000. You'd be over uh, where we should be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to maintain a 500,000 level. So that's where we are right now. Okay. Uh, it actually sounds worse. At this time, this is about where we normally are. There are changes. Hopefully, they'll be the positive. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll just uh, have to wait and see how we go from here, but at least gives you an idea where you are. If you review this and you have any questions, uh, let me know. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Oh, before you go, Michael, um, I want to make, you know, it's a very big day in Medfield today. Um, I believe it's someone's birthday, so we do want to um, recognize uh, Michael's uh, birthday today. It was my, my last year in my 60s. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yes, thank you. I've had a very nice day. The women threw a very nice party for me. Oh, so excellent. All set. So. Oh, great. Headed downstairs. Thanks, Let Mike. Let's see, next uh, we're going to discuss the snow deficit through uh, February 24, uh, to March 3. Chris. Mike gave you uh, most of the overview in that your original appropriation uh, was approximately 277000 and year to date uh, through today at about 4 o'clock, so this is not included the storm tonight, uh, you've expended approximately 485000 Isn't that amazing? That's 485000 Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, did you say 485? 485,308 is the year to date expended on and what's snow. The, and, what's, and what's the budget? The original budget was 277,000. Isn't that amazing? So you're over by about uh, $208,000. That is oh. like stunning yeah. amounts of money. Yeah. Um, so well, we'll, we'll be years. hoping, uh, Don has been doing a great job um, putting together the reimbursement uh, for both the schools and the town. So her first deadline for the first storm is this Friday, and we should hear back uh, not long after that what they'll include and what they won't include. So. That's amazing. And it's supposed to snow, well, it's snowing yeah. now, yeah. snowing it's Thursday, good. snowing Monday, so yeah. I don't think just we've seen the end of our snow budget just yet. No. Thank you. Um, discussion of Selectman's annual calendar. I don't think Mike and I have anything prepared on this. We've been okay. knee-deep in budgets all week. Oh. All right, why don't we just carry that over then to the next meeting? Yes. Uh, Medfield Foundation cordially invites the Board of Selectmen to attend its uh, March 22nd, 2015 reception honoring volunteer uh, in Medfield, uh, and there will be the awarding of the Volunteer of the Year, the Youth Volunteer of the Year, and uh, two Lifetime Achievement Awards, three Lifetime Achievement Awards, actually. Further, the Foundation requests uh, permission to post signs at designated locations promoting the event uh, that will be held uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, so moved. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yeah, and I will recuse myself uh, from that. Uh, we're asked to see a copy of letter from Representative Denise Garlick and Representative Sean Dooley 
to Stephanie Pollock, who is the newly appointed <coughs> Secretary of Mass Department of Transportation regarding the proposed rail service through the midfield to Foxborough. So do we know if, if that uh, is actually happening or what is going on with that? I think everything's on hold until they can figure out their, the their current problems that they're having. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see whether or not that's included in, in the governor's discussion of that. I have a question. Did the sale actually go through? Did, they, did um, the MBTA actually purchase that from um, CSX? CSX? I believe the sale has gone through. Um, I know the uh, 495 partnership, who's been very involved because most of their towns fall along this rail, um, are interested in coming in to speak to you about that. Mm -hmm. um, and they're interested in hearing how the board feels about this as well as uh, any, informa any information they have they're interested in sharing with you. I mean, it, it's almost ludicrous uh, in light of what's gone on the past month with the, with the MBTA and the train service that we're spending $23 million and projected $84 million on the whole line um, to go to Foxborough when we can't even run the current system to Boston, to Boston, Boston. right now. I know. It's I amazing. can't imagine that you know any sort of expansion is going forward until they review exactly what's happened over the last six weeks for the current system. You would think so. You would hope so. The, yeah. when, when the MBTA uh, officials came out here before and talked about the, ex the extension of the line from Needham to Medfield, they, their statement was it'll never happen. We'll never do it unless the politicians order us to do it because it won't. Make it any makes money. money. Yeah. yeah, but this is a different line. This well, is but the, it's still it's the same. The same thing. It's uh, the same uh, issue. Money, it's though. not going to make any money. Yeah. So lose more money. Uh, it, more. It's it's beyond belief that that's even on the boards. I know. I know. It's just it's amazing they got like uh, I don't know what they were doing in there, but hopefully they'll get it back under control there because the board is like they I don't know what the hell they're thinking. Buy the, stuff. The, the commuter rail from Framingham to Boston hasn't been restored fully yet. No, no, I know. And, and, and the Walpole line isn't on full service either. It, it, it's, uh, awful. Yeah. it's awful. It's uh, awful. And it's at end a, of March. a large number of, of Medfield people that take that as well as the, yeah. you know, the one in Needham. But yeah. the one in, in Walpole, um, because I pick my wife up there every night. Uh, we were almost an hour and a half late uh, yeah. last night. Yeah. They, they've cut the number of trains right. so that the number of riders, and th it used to be three trains in the morning, now it's one. So you got the ridership of three getting into one. Right. She says from Norwood on, you're standing. Right. Um, it's jam-packed. You're stopping. They're late. People, uh, business, I mean, how businesses are supposed to work as they can't plan to get workers in to, to meetings to start. People that have daycare and things at home, they can't get home to get their kids at daycare or meetings. I mean, it's... it's well, the, amount of, the amount of traffic on the highways, including the Mass Pike, yeah. is, is tripled since the teens, because now people are driving into town, yeah. which is creating more issues. There's no parking as it was. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it realize that we've had a very snowy uh, February, but... Uh, to spend $84 million on, on expanding things when we can't get the system that we have to work know, is amazing. ludicrous. I know. Yeah. So I, I think the more we can, I think Representative Garlick and Dewey have done a nice job uh, uh, um, getting on this and making the uh, Department of Transportation know what a ridiculous, uh, ridiculous uh, setup this is. So um, the more we can have them on the state level keep pushing that, I think is yeah. to our advantage. Our next item is a discussion regarding the mosquito control funding for fiscal 16. It says I'm supposed to designate uh, Town Administrator right. Sullivan to sign the declaration of support. Are you going to vote on that or you just do it? <coughs> I think, uh, usually I think you vote, yeah. Michael, to sign um, it. So I moved support. that uh, uh, Chairman Peterson designate uh, uh, Town Administrator Mike Sullivan to sign the declaration I of support. I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, second that. All in favor. Yep. Okay. Vote to sign uh, March 30 warrant for the annual town election. So moved. Uh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, yep. Licenses and permits. St. Edward's Parish requests a one-day liquor license for their annual St. Patrick's Day dinner to be held on Sunday, March 15, 3 to 5 p.m. So moved. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Page Realty requests a one-day wine and malt beverage permit for a cellar seminar to be held on March 12, 6 to 9 p.m. at the Midfield Library. And so moved. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Yep. 
girls' high school varsity softball requests permission to hold a car wash. Ah, spring. Yeah. Behind town hall. It's still going to be snow. On okay. Saturday, April 11, or alternative date, May 3. Should be coming more realistic. Nine to one. <laughs> uh, so moved. I'll second that. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Uh, selectman reports. Man, we're moving along. Yeah. Uh, Richard? Um, it, just a couple of things. Um, I was able to um, take part in that uh, conference call that um, there was 250 uh, cities and towns in Massachusetts that talked with the lieutenant governor concerning um, getting the funds uh, and putting pressure, uh, the request for FEMA and the president to declare oh, yeah. um, a disaster so that the snow funds can be, uh, can be replaced. Um, but it was interesting. It's a lot of work. I know that, that Donna has to calculate. Uh, that's a lot of work on her part. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it would be um, overtime on the plowing. It would, it would cover such things as, I guess, all five of our school roofs were shoveled off, the library, uh, the DPW garage and the center, mm -hmm. senior yeah. center. So those costs all, also uh, hopefully would be covered. And they said it was unusual. Normally there's an event that takes place and the, the president can declare a, a disaster. But because we've had four storms, one right after another almost each week, they're trying to group the four of them together and make that one, oh, one event. Thing. Yeah, uh, which if it happens would be uh, would be very unusual. But certainly the events that have taken place this February have been very unusual. So hopefully the president will do that, and then that will enable us, uh, as Mike said, to um, get back a lot of the uh, the funds that we've had uh, to spend. So that was interesting. Um, uh, I also uh, the uh, committee to study memorials uh, met. Uh, one of the things uh, to my right uh, in the corner uh, where the wires are, uh, they're proposing to put what they call a uh, MIA POW, Missing in Action, Prisoner of War, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. chair. Okay. And uh, we've been working with the Tri-County School uh, to see if they can make a little um, platform that okay. the wires will sit underneath. Okay. And then the chair will sit there. Yeah. And they're looking for... Uh, each city and town in Massachusetts to have this oh, chair, yeah, that's nice. and no one would ever sit in it, right. and there would be a um, like a little um, uh, roped off oh, area yeah. with uh, an American flag and uh, probably yeah. a POW flag, yeah. MIA POW flag that would be next to it. So that's, uh, that's that's in the works um, with that. Has, and the, has, has Ron Griffin been involved in that? Yes, Good. he is. He uh, is the chair of the community study memorials, and. Um, you may have noticed, and we're on hold because of all the snow, but um, uh, all the honor and civic square signs are being replaced. Mm -hmm. They probably have about 80% of them replaced, and then the snow hit, and they can't get at them uh, to put the signs up. So uh, they'll be coming up uh, shortly as well. And then the only other thing I was just going to ask on, um, uh, are we scheduling, uh, there was an individual you were going to contact on the uh, CPA mm -hmm. to come in to meet with us in the Warren Committee, uh, do you know? If they, uh, they're able to come to most any of our next meetings and the discussion that I had with them was, uh, <coughs> we started with uh, March 17, but that turns out to be the warrant hearing. And uh, so that uh, I settled on April 7 with them as a uh, time when they would come. Oh, good. Um, they have a presentation. It's uh, Kathy Roth mm -hmm. is the woman's name, Catherine Roth, who is the assistant director of this community preservation org. Dot org. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what the official name of the entity is. Um, but uh, she said that they have a, a 25 to 35 minute uh, presentation that they do so she thought that maybe we should allow 45 minutes including the uh, any questions that might come up so does that uh, April 7 work for you guys for sure. me yeah. can, can we invite uh, the Warren Committee also to come up to that sure yeah could uh, and Evelyn when we schedule that could we uh, maybe schedule them the, the, at the beginning of the meeting so that she can go home and then uh, okay okay thank you oh, that's great uh, thank you and uh, that's all I missed. They had, uh, oh, the other part of that was that they had some suggested language for uh, uh, warrant articles that uh, I, I copied Mike and Chris and, and Evelyn, I think, on the emails. Mm -hmm. So, Mark? 
Um, so just a couple things coming up this week, too. Um, I think it's, it's tomorrow, right? At 11 o'clock are they open? I think they're opening the bids for, the, for the general contractor, contractor for the public safety building, so that'll be important to see. And then it's this Saturday, right? I think it's the 7th. I think is at 10 o'clock, I think, at the Dale Street is the um, public safety um, building committee. Are they doing the... Um, uh, like a forum, community forum. I think it's 10 o'clock at the Dale Street in the, high school, in the high school. Did I hear that auditorium. afterwards they're going to open up uh, so tours of the two uh, police fire? Is that true? Oh, also? Yes. I would think so. It is. That makes okay, good. So um, once again, just to encourage everyone, um, if they've got some more questions and stuff like that, it'll be a terrific opportunity for uh, people to ask the committee any questions they have about the building, right? They'll all be there. They'll have the latest numbers. I mean, they'll have really good numbers from all the bids that will be in, and they should really be able to be very, very specific, I think, in their answers for everyone. So I think and I, I think people then, I hope if they've not seen the uh, current police and fire stations, oh, yeah. would then take a second to tour so they can see for themselves the conditions that are there. Yeah, it's, the buildings aren't too, uh, aren't too terrific. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're way past their life lifespan and stuff like that. I think that. everybody recognizes that, but there do, does seem to be a lot of concern about the spending and the, the level of spending. So I think it's good that they're having that uh, that meeting and that uh, yeah, they can explain to them. Yeah, up. Chris, uh, uh, as a result of some of the inquiries this past week, put the uh, the town budget online and the uh, the town the number of town employees uh, in different departments online. So uh, so that's good. That's very good. Um, that's it. Mm -hmm. I would mention uh, the Cub Scout Pac-10 had their blue and gold banquet on, uh, oh. on uh, Saturday night. A uh, nice event. They, they, they really entertain a lot of kids uh, very quickly. It was kind of sad, although I guess Sean Corrigan had been a uh, father of a couple of their oh, Cub Scouts, yep. so that was kind of a, a sad part of the evening. Uh, they did a collection for the Corrigan family, which was a nice thing to do. Yeah. Uh, the Medfield State Hospital Master Planning Committee is meeting tomorrow night, and they should be hopefully choosing the, uh, the planner that they're going to use. They're down to two at this point. Um, the, uh, I'm going to have office hours on Friday at the center, 9 to 10, anybody that's interested in talking about any town issues. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's pretty much it in terms of things that I've been involved with. There was a lot of discussion um, recently about the water and sewer board um, budget issues. Oh, yeah. We and um, I've, I've been talking to uh, Jeremy Marset, who's the chair of the water and sewer board, and to, and to Mike Marcucci, the chair of the, the warrant committee, and suggested that we hold a joint meeting of the selectmen, the warrant committee, and the water and sewer board to try to straighten out uh, what's going on and so I, I said I'd take a stab at putting together an agenda for that that might be a meeting on a Saturday morning if that's okay with you guys sure uh, that's how I was thinking. Yeah. okay um, I was gonna ask Mike about the uh, RFP for the cell antenna but that's probably one of those things that he's pushed to the back burner I had um, where was it I went to the I went to the uh, um, to the Medfield High School when they had their uh, uh, teacher training day Every room's got a camera mounted on the, on the ceiling in the high school. Mm -hmm. I think that we really should have a projector on the ceiling in this room. I mean, there, there, there are often people that need to bring in a projector, mm -hmm. and I think we should somehow try to accommodate that. We're actually um, in the process of taking it a step further is to not use a projector. Um, we're working with Owen to install a television on the wall that will be able to run the presentations directly through the TV. So Great. we're nice working panel. with... Yeah, uh, great. There's... A, couple gentlemen in town, I believe, who are willing to donate some of that to the town. Oh, well, excellent. Uh, Great. may have had excellent. a horrible meeting in here. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it's not good for presentations. That was clear no. during the housing production plan that we need that. So we're just yeah. trying to work with the IT staff about what the best opportunity for this room is. Um, it wasn't designed no. for no. multimedia. No. No. Um, and originally I had talked to Owen, who is our IT director, about going the projector route, but uh, instead we're going to go, I think, TV. with this television issue. Yeah. I went to a meeting at the... Uh, uh, Town Hall and uh, do, 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 do. It, it was one of the towns down south. It was either Taunton, it was probably Taunton, and they had a, uh, a TV screen sitting in their in their uh, meeting room for the mm -hmm. selectmen that was probably like four by eight feet. I mean, it was just monstrous, mm. um, and and so that's the sort of thing I think that you're talking mm -hmm. about only 
theirs was probably bigger than we would do. <laughs> the other thing that occurs to me that we should be doing, like like sheets that Mike was uh, presenting from tonight, mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that we should have the facility to get onto a board so that people can see it at the, during the meeting at home. Correct. Yep. And so I we'll think, I, yeah, I think we'll having we'll that. We'll be able to do that. Good. So that would mount on, on that wall? On that wall there. So we'd have to relocate the, the picture that usually resides there. <laughs> Oh, I, I did have one other thing that Generally. happened this weekend to Saturday night, right? We had the Medfield High School alumni, the trivia quiz. Trivia yeah, night. We did not win. Oh, middle man. of the pack this year. <laughs> we're just very <laughs> average, our group was. But, uh, <laughs> but it was a good, another good turnout. You know, it good it was very good. Uh, and the, the one table that led the entire way lost on the, the last, last yeah the last question there. john harney's table <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looked, they look good because Not they were really ahead of everyone the whole time they had built up a great lead they he snatched was, defeat from the jaws of victory yeah. at the last minute <laughs> was it was it maybe it might have been even the last i don't know if it was, it was the, the last, last question. question it was, it was the, the last very question, last question, question. Yeah. so yeah, who won then i don't know uh, it was the o'donnell tools table um, oh, it was oh, a good. run it was a tie and they had to do a yeah, a runoff, uh, which was dealing with uh, state uh, government, state yeah. uh, issues, uh, um, but it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it was very good. And certainly, well, you may, might not have won the the overall, but you certainly had the prize for the best food. Yeah, yeah, and, and the best decorations. <laughs> I don't know. The other, a lot of the other people kind of stuffed shirts. They didn't bring hardly any decorations <laughs> for their tables and stuff. Yeah. You certainly yeah, had the best food. Yeah, so I couldn't figure that out. But anyways, it was good. So it was. Uh, Sounds like a yeah. successful I evening. Weekend. Yeah, that was good. So, Chris, anything you want to bring to people's uh, attention in I the just, informational? Uh, not in the informational, but I did uh, have Anywhere an interesting um, point to bring up. Is the DCAM commissioner has been appointed? Did you see that? Um, Carol Gladstone is the new DCAM commissioner. She started last February, and she was formerly a, princ a principal at GLC Development, which is Drew Left's development firm. Oh, interesting. So I thought yeah. that was interesting. Um, but she is uh, officially up and running and was uh, started last Wednesday. Gladstone. 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 Yep. Person? Carol. Spelled exactly the same oh, way. <laughs> Do we know what happened to the other Carol Cornelison yet? Uh, I have not heard where she's landed yet. Oh. No. Yeah. No. I believe she had several opportunities she was uh, considering. Good. Okay, well, she's a really smart lady. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. she, she was a good for midfield. Uh, under informational, uh, just another letter from DEP congratulating uh, Medfield for their wastewater treatment plan award. Yeah. And I've made sure a copy of that has gone into uh, the personnel file of all of the employees down at the treatment plant. Um, ZBA hearing, a planning board hearing. Um, Tell me about the restaurant next door. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about that? Any, any scuttlebutt? Any gossip? Do we know what it's going to be? Not yet. Uh, not mm -hmm. yet. No, and not for just lack of trying. <laughs> <laughs> That's going into the old uh, Wills building next door, yes. the old but master's touch spot. They're just planning to open for dinner. Okay, dinner no only. lunch, just oh. dinner mm -hmm. Okay. Which is and good for parking. As a start, yeah. Actually, you're right for Which parking. Which is good for parking, parking because yeah. Yeah. with Town Hall closing at 4.30, that yeah. frees up a significant number of spots, so that I think yeah, that'll work out well. It'll be a complimentary use to the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, and that's it from... Are there, do we know if they're taking the whole first floor? It's my understanding, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to be a good sized restaurant then. Yeah, I would yeah. think so, yeah. By the time you get down the kitchen and stuff like that, it chews yeah. up a lot of space, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're still working on parking with them. I know. Yeah, if know. you think about it, the number of restaurants and the different types of restaurants we have in Medfield now, yeah. here's a way to, you know, looking for a, a destination location to eat in Medfield. I mean, yeah. the number of different restaurants and, and the different types of restaurants yeah. that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is, is impressive. No, and I don't know if you noticed, uh, Jenny of Boston closed. They were on the corner here. Uh, they had raised their rent, and she actually has uh, a store now at the Natick Mall. Oh, okay. Um, so they didn't wow. renew the, the lease here, but there's already a tenant who's going in, I believe it's before the planning board now, putting in a juice bar. A juice bar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, juice bar. Okay. I know. Um, so if you're, I think Mark is here. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Thank you. See you all. Take care. Bye, Bill. Night. Um, Interesting. So then we'll uh, transition to our uh, to your executive to our uh, in that room in the kitchen executive Thank session. You. Yes. And so uh, I'll grab your my sheet. Get yeah, right, you get her. Mm -hmm. Your official reading. He's gonna do the official reading of that.
And the Capital Budget Committee is meeting tomorrow morning at 7.30 uh, to get started. We anticipate about three meetings to get us going. Have you seen preliminary, um, have we seen anything from the Capital Budget yet? Uh, for requests? Requests? Yes. You have? Yep, and I can, give, uh, can hand out a copy of the requests. Uh, they're not all in. Um, highway Department is still working on their requests. Obviously, the snow has everybody. Um, you know, we're kind of working from behind on budgets in terms of snow and the amount of equipment that they are uh, looking to have replaced um, due to the snow. Oh, a lot of stuff's kind of broken. Will increase. Yeah. So I don't. Um, I'm not surprised. No. So the recommendations I give you tonight um, have everybody included except for Public Works. Okay. So this is the school budgets. This is nice. So a different format. It's um, uh, more colors. Than in the past, you know what I mean? At least the presentation is. So, Mark, I, I have a uh, my cheat sheet on uh, what to announce, and uh, yeah. I seem to have uh, called it out of my file, so I don't have it. <laughs> so that I can go find a copy. Jeez. Or do it by memory. I was going to try to wing it yeah. by memory, but. Do you have a, need to go into executive uh, session to discuss. Pending litigation relate, relating to the uh, uh, clock tavern. Tavern. Uh, an open discussion would have a prejudicial impact on the town's opposition to the litigation. I so declare that. Right. Is that sufficient? So, based on you yeah, having made the, the declaration, somebody needs to make a motion that tracks. Okay, I just declared it then. Okay. Right. And then uh, so that. Uh, if someone would make the motion to track the uh, declaration. So moved. All right. And uh, yes. Roll call. Yep. We need a second. Oh, I'll second it, and then, oh. you, and then you can do the roll call. Yep. Roll call. Uh, Suckman Fisher. Uh, aye. Suckman Peterson. Yep. Desauger, aye. And did we say that we weren't going to uh, uh, reopen? We will not it? return uh, to, open, to session. open session. Good. Okay. Hi, I'm Jeff Marsden, and you're watching Medfield.tv.